Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. On today's lesson, we're going to take a look at parallelism. Yes, some writing tips. So let's get started. First off, what is parallelism? Parallelism is the presentation of equal or parallel ideas in the same or parallel grammatical form. Individual terms with individual terms. Phrases with phrases. And clauses with clauses. Effective parallelism can increase the clarity and impact of your writing. So let's take a look at my example. Claudio's Hamlet's uncle strides confidently through the play's action. His ground is ill-gotten, but he reaps its benefits. He smiles confidently. Those close to him are assured that he is indeed the rightful king. This would be the, the first draft. How about if I wanted to create one sentence, combine all those four sentences in one? So let's take a look at our revised version. Claudius, Hamlet's uncle, strides confidently through the play's action. And here is the change. Reaping, a verb with ing. Reaping his benefits of ill-gotten crown. Another ing verb, smiling confidently. And yet another ing verb, assuring those close to him that he's indeed the rightful king. That sounds much better, right? Let's take a look at our next case, faulty parallelism. Faulty parallelism occurs when items in a series, paired or contrasting items, or items in a list, do not have the same grammatical form. So, for example, I like to spend my winter holidays skating, skiing, and I also enjoy snowboarding. How about our revised version? I like to spend my winter holidays skating, skiing, and snowboarding, right? ING verbs. So I started with an ING verb, and then I continued using ING verbs. Another one. Sam had to iron, do the washing and shopping before his parents arrived. So this is a kind of a faulty sentence, right? So if we revise it, Sam had to iron, wash and shop before his parents arrived. So if I started with the infinitive to verb, so I continue using the infinitive verb throughout. Another example, my philosophy professor not only demonstrated how to reason persuasively, but also how to avoid logical fallacies. Hmm, kind of faulty, right? Let's look at our revised version. My philosophy professor demonstrated not only how to reason persuasively, but also how to avoid logical fallacies. Isn't that much better? Yes. Okay, let's go to the next point. How to edit faulty parallelism. A list or a series of equally important items should be parallel in grammatical structure. Phrases should balance phrases. Clauses should balance clauses. And within phrases and clauses, Equivalent elements should be at the same kind nouns with nouns, for example, or verbs with verbs. So let's take a look at my example. The development plan included apartment buildings, mm, so that is a noun phrase, yes. Single family dwellings, yes, noun phrase. A park, a noun, okay. And mm, constructing two new schools, no, let's erase constructing. And let's just have the noun phrase, two new schools. That sounds much better, right? The writer deleted constructing to make the last item in the series consistent with the rest of the items, which 
are all nouns or nouns modified by adjectives. In the next sentence, the writer uh, changed the last item in the series to give all three items the same form. Action verb followed by direct object. The national policy was seen as a way to develop Canada's economy by increasing tariffs on foreign goods, reducing custom duties on raw materials, and let's erase it enforced, and enforcing trade reciprocity with the US. Sounds much better, right? In the following sentence, the writer changed a noun to an adjective. Notice that the writer also decided to repeat the word too to make the sentence more forceful and memorable. My sister obviously thought that I was too young and then too ignorant, I added too, and too troublesome, right? It sounds much better. Instead of having my sister obviously thought that I was too young, ignorant, and a troublemaker. The adverb to makes the sentence more consistent, so I added it before the adjective ignorant and troublesome. Make paired ideas parallel. Pairing ideas with coordinating conjunctions, so we have the example. The job requires initiative and leading roles. Hmm, that's faulty. It's better to write the job requires initiative and leadership, right? So to make the sentence consistent, I added the noun leadership. Another sentence. Climbing the mountain was hard, but to descent was not much easier. So this is faulty. Why is it faulty? Well, the sentence started with an ing verb, and then we have an infinitive to verb, right? So let's take out um, the infinitive to, and let's make it into an ing verb. So climbing the mountain was hard, but descending was not much easier. It sounds much better this way. Pairing ideas with correlative conjunctions. So we have the example, successful teachers must both inspire students and also challenging them is important. Well, this is very faulty, and I tell you why. Look at the revised version. Successful teachers must both inspire, okay, and that's a verb, inspire, and challenge, another verb, their students. It's much better that way, right, than challenging. So we started with a present, tense verb and then challenging an ing verb. Okay, no, let's make it consistent. Repeat function words as needed. Function words indicate the function of or relationship among other words in a sentence. In the following sentence, the writer omitted the function word to from the second and third infinitives because the sentence is clear without the words. So let's look at what we are talking about. Her goals for her retirement were to travel, then I erased to, to study, so study art history, and then I erased to again, write a book about Michelangelo. Yes, the first two is enough. You don't need to repeat the other twos. The writer of the next sentence repeated the infinitive to to make clear where one goal ends and the next begins. So the project has three goals. First, to survey the valley for Inca period sites. Second, to excavate a test trench. And third, to excavate one for those sites completely. So if I added the two, it makes the sentence clear what one goal ends and the other one begins. So in this case, yes, it is good to, to add it to. Make the items in outlines, headings, and lists parallel. Make items at each level of heading consistent when writing a paper. So for example, we have Germany's path to continuing prosperity. 
Number one, economic realities. Large gap between Eastern and Western Germany's GDP. B, the public sector deficit is ballooning. And C, lower than expected FDI inflows. Well, mm, B is um, faulty. So let's revise it and then let's make it into a phrase, not into a sentence like we had in the first example. So ballooning public sector deficits. Do you see the difference? I hope so. So now let's go over to you and let's have some practice. Eliminate any faulty parallelism. So these are the three sentences. Pause the video and then I'll give you the key. Now that you have your sentences ready, let's check the key. So for number one, the majoral candidate stepped to the podium, glanced angrily at her challenger and began to refute his changes. Do you see the change that we needed to make? Glanced angrily at. For number two, her challenger, she claimed, had not only accused her falsely of accepting illegal campaign contributions, but also had accepted illegal contributions himself. So you can see in blue are the changes that I made. For the third one, newlywed couples need to learn to communicate effectively and budget wisely. It's just wisely that needs changing. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for um, watching my lesson. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't um, subscribed to my channel. Hit the like button, please. That would help me, you know, get some new uh, viewers and share the lesson uh, with your friends or with your teacher. So until next time, I'm logging off. Thank you. Bye-bye.